Hi everyone, Markman here. So this is going to be part two in the series um, loading 4570. Um, we got some new ones, some used brass. So this is going to be part two. So in the first one you saw us um, depriming a uh, uniform in the pocket, just doing a quick check on the brass and getting in the cleaner. So this one now we're going to go into the next step. So what I've done is I've all come out to the, the polisher and I have got some Hornady brass. We've got RP Remington brass there. I have some Starline brass. This one here is FC brass and a few odd balls. We've got PMC and uh, some WW Winchester brass there as well. So before we get into it, um, some of the things I've noticed. So just a quick rundown. So Starline Brass, it's 2.106, 2.106 length. And that's around about the average for all this Starline Brass. And what the books are saying, I've looked at the books, and the brass um, should be 2.105. So there's a new piece of Starline Brass. And it is actually coming out at 2.101. So unfired Starline Brass to fired Starline Brass is very similar. So this one was... 2.101 so it's the same length basically the fired brass compared to the new brass so over here I've got the RP brass again and these are ranging around about 2.0885 to 2.095 so a little little bit shorter than the star line but not nothing to worry about and then we have the the FC brass Again, it's coming out about the same length, 2.086. And then over here I've got some WW Winchester Brass. And that one's at 2.097. And this is a PMC Brass. And we're at 2.081. So this brass came from Gene from loading from the reloading from the hot pot. He was kind enough to send me some brass. I was struggling to find some. So this is his used brass that he sent me, and I really appreciate it, Gene. Thank you so much. So as you can see, all the brass this side, which is all the Starline, Remington, Winchester, FC, very consistent to each other. But Hornady brass. So we got the Hornady 4570 brass. And now we're down at 2.030 so quite a bit shorter so I've been doing a little bit of research and I've looked into it and 2.028 so the Hornady brass that they use is a lot shorter so this is why I'm splitting everything up so I've actually got some Hornady um, new, new bullets, new rounds and these are actually 325 grain um, FTX bullets so I bought some of these just so I could go shoot in so that I wanted to measure the brass on these and the brass on these as close as I can get it we're looking at 2.035 so even the new brass is quite a bit shorter so I'll be loading up the Hornady as a separate load to the the used brass over here because it's so much shorter so I'm going to keep this together as a batch all my Starline brass I got new and some used now is all going to be kept together and then the other ones are just going to be made up because they're so close in length um, the bullets I'm going to be using on the Starline brass are going to be these Hornady they're 250 grain Monoflex 250 grain 45 cal bullets so that's what I'm going to be loading these up with. And with them being so much shorter, um, obviously with the crimp and everything, I want to get them um, 
in groups of about the same length so we can get the same amount of crimp on them. So all my Hornady brass is going to be kept as one batch. All my used brass over here is one batch and obviously I've got new brass that we're going to be loading up. So eventually I'm going to be trimming these to get them all the same length. So once I fire them and they fire form to my, to my rifle, I'm going to be trimming these. I'll get the trimmer and I'm going to get these trimmed up. So they'll all be the same. I'm going to get them to the same length so I can keep all that batch together and this batch together. I just thought it was very interesting that there was so much difference in length between all the other manufacturers and the Hornady brass, with the Hornady brass being oh, six thou, five, six thou shorter. So quite a bit, quite a bit shorter. So I just wanted to show you that before we start. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start sizing this brass. We're going to lube it. We're going to size it. It's going to get cleaned and then we're going to go through the next process of getting this loaded up. So stick with us guys. And don't forget if you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get updated. So I'm going to get these uh, ready and we're going to go on to the next part over on the Red and T7 and let's get them sized. Okay, so we're over on the, the bench now and we're going to start the, the process. So I've got the Hornady, I'm going to do the Hornady brass first. So a lot of, like a lot of you know, I really like this Dylan case loop. You just shake it up and you just put some spray. couple of squirts. Just put a couple of squirts of it on the brass, shake it around a bit and then just let it dry. I really love that Dylan case lube, it's the best case lube I use. So um, I'm gonna carry on using that. So for this, for this setup guys we're gonna be using the Lee reloading dies, 4570. Um, I've also got that set of cowboy dies from RCBS because we're going to be loading the um, monofleck Hornady bullets. We don't need the extra, so we're going to set up the Lee dies for doing this. So the first process is, so I got the Lee, it's a deep primer and sizing die, which I've already deep primed them, but I'm just going to leave the the deep primer in there anyway it's not going to do any harm and it'll push out any um, if there's any media or anything in the flash hole primer hole it'll push that out so I'm just going to bring the die down just to touch the the raised arm release it a little bit and a small turn just to work that cam over so this red in press likes a little bit of cam over the way it pivots and there we go just to touch a cam over there so I have the, the wrenches in here rather than using the little plastic ones that the supply I got these bought these off Amazon and we use them just to nip down on these Dinette. So it just needs a small touch. Don't don't need much. And there you go. It's all it's all set up there. And then the second process, we're going to put in a little bit of flare on the a little bit of flare into the the neck of the the brass. So we have the lee. This is a a powder through powder through dye but we're not going to be we'd be using something else for doing the powder on it we're just going to basically use this for the flare so again this will be adjusted as we need to so the first process we can get the piece of brass which is all lubed ready to go just drop it in bring it up and size it There you go, that's been sized. Let me just get a, a rag, wipe this down. 
So I just like to wipe the lube off it. So this one's been sized back. Let me get my case gauge out. So I've got the the lineman 4570 case gauge. And there we go. It drops in nice. Nice and flush with the top and it's falling out. So that's sized nice. And just to show you, here's one that hasn't been sized. It doesn't go all the way down. Saw that on the camera. You can see it's not going all the way down into the sizing gauge. The one that I've just sized, perfect. It drops in, clear the clunk, and it comes back out. And then again, at this process, I'm going to be having a look at the brass. There is a couple of little dings in them, but that's going to come out. That'll come out when we when we shoot it. That's going to fire form to the barrel, and it's sized all the way down, nice and tidy. So I can pop it back in there now. Bring this up into the die. And we're going to start doing the... We'll do the little bit of a flare on it. To accept those bullets. Let me just go and get one of those. Okay, so before we start flaring, so this has been sized and then there's the bullet and it, it sits in there but there's nothing, it's going to drag, whatever. So at the moment, the neck, <clears throat> we are at 5.78, 5 5.078, it's just a guide, this is just for me just to know where I am with it, so five, in fact, sorry, it's 4.078. So we can just put this back into the flaring tool, start bringing, the, bringing it down, and you can feel, as you're bringing this down, you can you feel once it starts to flare. I think it's just started there now. We're at now 5.85. So we've, we've put about a 6,000 flare on it, and you can see that is dropping in. I'm going to put just a little bit more on that. I just want to put just a touch more. I'm going to bring it up, I want to bring the lock nut down. that up just like that just a little bit pull it out and in fact that flare has gone with the last little bit's gone I think a little bit too much you can see it's flaring on the top I think we might be okay so you can see it's sitting inside there now but I think that flare is just a little bit too much. So what I want to do is take it back a touch. Turn it back and then tighten it back down. I don't need too much on there. Let me get a something to hold these. <clears throat> at the moment I'm going to have to get a, a new a new stand so I can go back I'm going to go in and I'm going to resize resize that back and then when you try the bullet in it's, it's not it's not going in much and then let's measure that now see where we are so we're at seven 4.075 7475 and then we can go in 
put the flare on. So we're at seven five, so there's twelve thou twelve thou of flare. And there it goes, it sits sits in there perfect, it's gonna hold it straight so when we load it it'll be good. Okay, so I found a little tray that's big enough to hold these larger bullets. Let's just drop that over there. Okay, so now that they they're lubed up. We can show you it's just we'll just drop it in the case gauge. It doesn't go all the way down. Let's get in there and size it. We can wipe that down. I always like to wipe the lube off before they go in the, the case gauge. And there you go. Dropping straight in, dropping straight out. Measure the top on this one quickly. So we're at 75. Let's pop it around here. It just flares it enough so the bullet's going to sit in there nice. See, it sits in there, it holds it nice and tidy. So when we're going to seat that, that's going to that's going to seat perfect. So this was at 75. We're at 90, so we got we got 15 thou of flare. But when you feel the, it's not too bad. You can see there's just enough where this is going in, and it's going to sit and hold perfect. So there you go. So the first steps that we're going to do, we've got them. So we got the sizing die set up. You can see this one. See how. This one is a little bit out of shape. So we'll go in, we'll size it with uh, everything in there. And there it goes, back to perfect. Take it round onto the expander, wipe it off. And here's that bullet sits in there. See how well it holds it, even though it's crook it a bit there it'll sit in there hold it so when we go to seat these bullets in here they're going to be perfect and it's a good way another check you're picking the brass up you're handling it so just turn it in your hand check it you can never do too many checks. You never know if there's going to be any splits or dings or anything. And it's just nice just to go through, check it all. Make sure it's all good. If you're happy with it, put it in the tray again. See that one's got a tiny little offset ding on the top. But the die will soon sort that out. Let's see it goes in that case gauge, perfect, nice and level, drop straight out, no resistance, take it round and flare it, I like to check every single one that's popping in there, that's perfect, so there you go, the next one done, so I'll go through, I'm going to finish off sizing and um, expanding these and I'll bring you back once they're all done. Okay, so I'm just coming to the end of this batch that we've just done. So these <coughs> are all the the Hornady stamped brass. So there's two more to go. So these are the ones that were quite a bit shorter than all the rest. So I'm just finishing these off. And then we'll go in and do the the other ones. So this is the last piece of the Hornady brass gone through so it's sized and we flared the end of it. So let me just go and get the other brass guys quickly. So 
So here we have all the, the Starline Remington Winchester. Some of the FC brass. So that's all there. So this time, because obviously this brass is a lot longer, so we've got to remember we need to adjust back the crimp die. So I'm just going to take that back out of the way. So now you can see this one is a this one is RP brass. So we can do the same process on the first one. Drop it in and size it. So that that gets sized. You can check it in the case checker. Drop straight in, nice and flush, and comes out. So this time, obviously, because this brass is quite a few thou longer, I've I've taken my um, expander die back, and then we go through the whole process again of taking it down. Until we start feeling that expansion come in. Just a touch at the time, a little bit at a time. We can check it against the bullet. Okay, so that's sitting in there. That looks like it's not far off, so I'm going to get a fresh piece. Just quickly size it. Let's get it measured. On the top it is 70, 74. Do the expansion. And we're at 74, we're up to 80. 86 so that's 11 thou of expansion the bull is going to sit in there fine it's not going to catch so we're good to go there so again we can just bring this back up to lock everything down holding the die in place just turn the lock nut down to lock this in place just a little nip so that one's done let's get a fresh piece Size it. Let's just quickly measure that one now just to verify. So we're at 70, 73, 74. Let's expand it. And we are at 84, 85. So 11th hour expansion. So just about perfect. can see this one has got a little bit of a, a ding in the top and if we can see that let's see if we can put that right if not it can go in the scrap yeah that pulled the ding out and it's good okay so I'm gonna go through let's get some of these sized up and I'll bring you back okay so we come into the end of this little batch guys of the of the longer brass of the mixed Starline Winchester and I had one piece which it's been through a couple of hours in the cleaner and it's this piece of brass and if you look at it there's a really nasty blemish on it and it feels quite rough so um, I don't know if this would do any harm if this would cause any problems but I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna bother with it. It's gonna go in my scrap brass. I can feel there's there's a few raised areas on it. I'm just not gonna mess around with it. You can see there's a big blemish on that one. So that one's gonna go in my scrap bucket. And then the last piece then can go through. And that's all done. So I have got 96 pieces of brass. I believe I had 106 or so from from Jean. Um, and I've had to cull 10 pieces, whether there was a bit of damage on them or cracked, whatever. 
so I've culled them. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take these over to the dry tumbler, run them for a couple of hours just to clean all the lube and everything off, get them back nice and clean, and then we'll come back and do the priming and setting everything up for the priming on a on our bench primer. So we'll catch you in a bit, guys. Okay, so we've just got the the brass out of the tumbler and I've resorted it back out. So this is all the Hornady brass, um, Starline and then mixed is our uh, Remington in there. I think there's some CBC brass in there, so there's just a mixture there. So we're going to concentrate on this now because as we showed you in the in the earlier, that this is this brass is quite a bit shorter. So we're going to run with this Hornady brass. Um, we're going to be loading up those bullets and we're going to run with um, Federal 210 large rifle primers. So we have 50 pieces of brass. Fifty in the box and two extra. So I've got a couple of loose ones in here I can use. A couple of loose ones. There we are. So we have fifty-two primers. <clears throat> so we're gonna use the RCBS bench primer, my favourite bench primer. So let's just get this tube full. Let me take a, a minute or so. We can get that loaded up. And then we'll move over to the, the bench primer itself and we'll start priming some of these cases. And I'm going to go with the IMR 4198 for these particular projectiles. But when I finish casting and powder coating some of my, my own bullets, we're going to be using the 40, 4198 and we're also going to be using Varget and I have, I have both of them ready to go. Okay, so that's full. Let's go over to the bench primer and let's start doing some, doing some priming. Okay, so most of you know this is my, my favourite go-to primer, the RCBS bench primer. 52 primers in the tube. Pull it over the large primer holder, pull the pin and there we are, ready to go. Just start at the front corner and now these have all been deprimed, pockets, primer pockets uniformed and cleaned They've been sized and we put the small flare on the top to accept the bullets already and then they went back in the cleaner. So that was the last cleaning process for these. So now we can go in, pop them in the primer, straight down till it hits the stop. And there you go. Primer in there, perfect. And then we can just go through, pop another one in there to the stop. You see it's down below where it should be, it's way down. Primer. primer tool works really well. I can't say enough good about it. Every couple I always check. I don't check every single one. You can feel them. You can feel them sit in and seat in really nice. They go in the same depth with this tool every time it just goes to the stop. Okay, I'll just go through and finish these off and we'll be back with you guys. Okay, so we come into the the last row of these cases. And like I said, this this primer tool really does make short work of everything. And there you go. It's empty. Fifty-two cases done. So there you go, guys. This is Hornady 4570 Government Brass. It's just been primed with the Federal 210 primers. Sized, flared, all ready to go. So this is the end of this 
episode in the series. The next one we're going to be going into powder charging and seating the bullet and then the one after that is going to be shooting it. So I hope you really enjoyed this one guys. If you do please like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification and we'll catch you on the next.